Can you give us some details on that? More detail, more details than you probably ever wanted. <laughs> uh, on October 11th, the Planning Commission unanimously uh, recommended this plan development uh, to the Council. You'll recall earlier this year there was some consideration about um, uh, regarding a, uh, a request to rezone this property to R5. At that time, the council said that they wanted to see a planned development approach to this property uh, so that uh, we can thoroughly vet out the, uh, the various potential issues um, related to, uh, to this proposed development, particularly where it's located on uh, West Market Street and Nashville. So uh, first of all, let me start by uh, indicating what in this uh, proposed development uh, is different about this as a planned development than if it had come as an R5. Uh, first of all, the R5 requires 6,000 square foot lots. Uh, there are 100, and, and that's uh, 7.7 7 and a quarter lots per uh, acre, and uh, generally speaking. Uh, this is 189 lots over three phases uh, proposed in the plan development uh, with an average of 7,450 square feet, uh, which equates to uh, just a li uh, little under six lots per acre. Uh, rather than be uh, all R5 lots, uh, these are a mix predominantly of R5 lots, but with some R4 and even some R3B, uh, which is even less dense than R4, uh, lots uh, uh, in, uh, located within uh, the 180, among the 189 lots. Another uh, unique uh, feature of this is a PD versus an R5 is the public open space or the park space. I won't say public, I shouldn't say that. Um, the uh, proposal is to include 20% of the, uh, the total subdivision as uh, park or uh, open space. 3% uh, is required as an R5. 10% minimum is required as a PD. So they're a little bit over twice what the minimum is uh, for a planned development. Let's talk a little bit about the traffic. Uh, there's been some question about Nashville as well as the intersection of Nashville and uh, State Route 55. Nashville is classified as a major collector. I'm not sure how long that's been, but it's been for a long time. Uh, prior to uh, annexation, uh, much of the, uh, that road was in the township uh, under the uh, Ohio Revised Code. Uh, that specifies that that road should be at 55 mile an hour speed limit. Uh, since it has uh, come into uh, primarily into Troy between Swales and uh, uh, West Market, uh, we've had a traffic engineer look at that and recommend that we reduce the speed to 45 miles an hour, and so we're in the process of doing that. Uh, traffic counts uh, were questioned, and uh, while the numbers seem high, uh, particularly for a uh, major collector, uh, they are uh, very minor. When you consider the fact that the threshold, it, it is a two-lane uh, street right now, Nashville is, um, to consider adding lanes to a major collector, uh, the traffic counts need to be uh, 20,000 cars per day or higher. Uh, as, as you might have looked at the, uh, the traffic count data, uh, depending on the section that, you, that was monitored, it's anywhere from 3,000 to less than 10,000 per day, again, depending on which section you look at. Uh, the intersection of, as part of this uh, PD, the intersection of Nashville and 55 will be straightened. Uh, they will also dedicate right of way for a future light or roundabout, whichever we, uh, we feel is more appropriate. That might be an excellent candidate for a roundabout. Uh, there are turn lanes included. Uh, the developer will be widening uh, State Route 55 
from Nashville to the west edge of the property. Uh, the city is looking at potentially adding a left turn lane uh, between Horizon and Kenton, which is uh, east of the property, uh, because there is a section that it narrows there right between those two roads. Um, and that is something we're studying uh, to do ourselves. Um, why why is this being proposed pri uh, as private? Well, that's the developer's prerogative to ask for that. We're recommending that it be private. Uh, it, we First of all, they have to follow the same basic subdivision standards, uh, particularly regarding uh, traffic and uh, drainage, which I'll get into in a minute. Uh, uh, of course, regarding infrastructure, the lighting, uh, the storm drainage, as I mentioned. Uh, being private means that there is no cost to the city uh, for future maintenance of that infrastructure, asphalt. Uh, we have no responsibility for the trash pickup, snow removal, uh, crack sealing, uh, et cetera. Uh, there was a question about HOA costs. Um, those, of course, depend on the, on the, the builder and is something that a, a, a new homeowner, somebody who wants to build the house, would consider with the overall costs of the house. Uh, but uh, the, their estimates are that they might be in the three to $400 a year range. Again, that remains to be seen, and it just depends on uh, the, the builder and uh, what kind of priorities they're going to have for the HOA. I can say that we've got six other uh, developments that are private developments. A um, couple of them are still under construction, but several of them have been uh, mature for quite a while and they, uh, they are uh, uh, in good shape. And uh, if there are issues just because they're private doesn't mean that uh, if, if, if there are problems, our staff would go out and would talk to them and then cite them and then follow up appropriately if needed under property maintenance. Uh, speaking of drainage, uh, there are two ponds in the preliminary design that uh, was in your packet. Uh, the actual size of those ponds and the types of ponds have not been determined yet. The detailed engineering has to be done. Uh, they could be retention ponds. They could be detention ponds. Uh, either way, they're, they're designed at a minimum. We'll have to meet our subdivision standards, which require that the, uh, the developer post-development has to handle uh, in the same way, the same capacity, the same design, uh, any uh, flow that comes onto the property uh, before it goes off of the property. Uh, specifically, chapter under Chapter 1123, 01 and 04, there are several sections that dictate, and uh, and we follow that up uh, accordingly. Uh, in in this case, we may farm that out to a, uh, a separate engineer, which we do from time to time on more complicated uh, or. Uh, not that we'd be concerned, but the ones that might get more scrutiny, um, we'll send that out to a, a consulting engineer to take a look at that and double check, double check the math and make sure that they're uh, uh, in compliance. Uh, we will be working with that engineer to make sure that not only is it uh, uh, designed appropriately to meet 100%, but hopefully there will be some additional capacity built in uh, to the final design. Um, we are, uh, we have already spoken about this once before, but why do we need, we feel we need this and why Why is this not a good, good thing? First of all, we're taking care of the traffic, uh, we're taking care of the drainage. Uh, as a private uh, development, it is minimizing uh, the impact of the city's future general fund and capital uh, budgets. Um, we do anticipate that this will either be direct workforce housing. Um, I know the word affordable has been thrown out, but that's really a, a 
not a very good word to use only because affordable is whatever you can afford. Uh, however, if it's workforce and there are folks that and in the workforce that can afford that, so be it. Uh, even indirectly, if there's somebody that is moving up in uh, uh, size and type of housing, uh, the the hope is that that will open a uh, a smaller or an older or a, a less expensive home for that first time uh, home buyer. Uh, we have a hundred. We have hundreds of jobs that are available in the community. Uh, if you talk to Clope, Conagra, um, Collins, ITW, Honda, any of the major industries, and I'm not trying to be uh, uh, totally inclusive there. There are plenty of other uh, important industries in Troy that have jobs available, uh, and uh, this type of housing is something that we've been focusing on. Uh, to try to build more more of that stock into the community, particularly after 2007, 2008, when we had the housing bubble. Um, so we don't feel it's going to uh, significantly impact the traffic. We don't. We we believe that the uh, uh, the drainage uh, will be handled uh, appropriately, if not more than appropriately, uh, and. Um, I think that is uh, the high points. Uh, we do have staff here. If you have any additional questions, as well as representatives from the developer are here. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Told you it was more than you probably wanted to know. Very detailed. I really appreciate that. Mr. Pierce, do you have any questions? I do. The water retention work, uh, when, when would it be completed? So, uh, as part of the PD process, they will have to do the design engineering, uh, submit that as part of the, I'm going to get the wrong word in here, but the uh, uh, the final pro plat process, they have to submit that to the planning, well, they'll submit that to staff, like I said, then we'll, we'll look at it uh, as a team, but also uh, probably farm the, uh, uh, the stormwater calcs out to another uh, engineer. Once uh, staff is satisfied that it's meeting the subdivision regulations, uh, then it will go to the Planning Commission for recommendation to the Council. So Council will see that, see the whole package as a, as a final plan for approval uh, at a later date. The reason I'm, I'm asking is once we start moving soil and working with the ground, I just want to make sure we don't create a flooding issue before we have a place for the water to go. So that's the only thing. So in the subdivision, in Chapter 1123, there are uh, precautions that we require the uh, developer to follow okay. uh, to make sure that there is enough temporary uh, storm drainage handling uh, while construction is going on. Thank you. Let me, let me add to that. I've been watching uh, the Redwood apartment development on McCaig, and first thing they do is they lay out all the underground stuff, the storm sewers and this type of thing, and they, at that time is when they dig the ponds so that the, the, the storm sewers are hooked up to the ponds, and then they pave, put in the curbs, and then they start building so that the, the ground, the the runoff is the first thing that they really work at to get, you know, that all that stuff runs into the, into the pond first before they do any any other construction on the site. So that's that's really they want to make you know they don't want to be working in a bunch of mud. And in in this particular uh, development plan, uh, they plan to uh, develop the uh, uh, the 58 acres in three phases. And both of those ponds will be constructed in the first phase. Okay. Thank you. Um, before we get to talking to the other council members, we may like to check with the audience and make sure there are any. There are, if there are any questions, they can come forward. We need your name um, and address and um, any questions that you might have. Daniel. I'm uh, Daniel, what's your last name? I'm sorry. Uh, Ringenberg. Okay. I live in Troy. 
And um, your address, please? Uh, Todd Lane. I live in Troy Crossing Apartments. Okay. Um, I don't know where to start, but um, I got pre-approved for 250000 through Veterans United, and there's not a chance I'm going to be able to afford any of these houses that you guys are talking about. There's a guy named John Stossel who did an awesome video about population density, and he basically said that the biggest way we can help kind of fix, like, not necessarily homelessness, but population problems, is instead of doing nothing but single-family dwellings, like I'm sure what you guys are talking about, more multifamily dwellings. It took me six months to get into my apartment. It would be great if there were more apartment buildings in Troy versus more single-family places. And um, roundabouts are dumb. People don't know how to yield. I've almost been hit a couple times here in Troy by people who don't know how to yield or read traffic signs, so please no more roundabouts. I lived in Wisconsin, and roundabouts were very trying. My Uncle Rich actually ran over somebody's car in his big truck because they thought they could sneak in between him and the curb in a roundabout. People do not know how to drive in roundabouts. Everyone believes that their time is more important than yours. So I've avoided tons of collisions at roundabouts. So please, no more roundabouts. Okay. Thank and, um, you. This is slightly off topic, but the building... Well, I'd, I'd like to keep it on topic. We're talking about the... Uh, um, subdivision. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, if you, so if you have anything to say about the yeah. subdivision, that's fine. Otherwise, um, we're done. But yeah, I definitely think uh, housing that's a little more reasonably priced would be a lot better of an idea than four hundred thousand dollar homes. Two hundred thousand to three hundred thousand. I don't know what the homes you guys are making are. I don't know if you guys are the ones doing it. But yeah, it'd be a lot nicer to have a lot more affordable houses. And yeah, there are tons of jobs in Troy. I work at Conagra. We're hiring people nonstop. So. It would just be nice to have more housing. I'm getting tired of my apartment. I wish I had a house. But there's so little housing available right now, especially in Troy. But thank you. Okay, I'll thank you. I appreciate it. Later. I'll see the rest of my stuff later if you don't mind. Okay, that, that's fine. Yeah, I, we, don't have, we don't have a general comment at time um, okay. at our committee meetings, but you can come back to council. Okay. Uh, and at the end of the council meetings, we do allow general comments, and you're welcome to come. And, and at that time, you can, you can talk as long as you'd like. And when is that? Uh, Monday nights. Uh, Monday, as a matter of fact, next Monday night we're having a council meeting. Okay. It's the first and third Monday of every every month, and it starts at seven o'clock. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and if you want to contact us, you can send a comment through the web, the Troy City website, to all the council people. There's a, a place to do that on the website. So if you want to, you know, give us information. That's always welcome. Okay. Um, anybody else wish to comment on the audience? Bradley Burning our Crestwood Drive, Troy. I just have a couple questions regarding uh, what I, I gathered from the hearing at the last council meeting. I had to watch it back on YouTube because I was working that night. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, we're looking at 300, I heard the number of 250 to $300,000 for one of these homes. Is that a, an accurate price range? I call? can't verify that. Uh, if somebody wants to comment on that from uh, the. Well, ultimately, it's because it's 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 what they're going to the charge for the house. The builder that ultimately builds out yeah. there. But the, the well, I heard a number of around 250 to 300. If I, if I got in the public hearing that night, maybe I heard something. Out of school, I don't know. Said I had to watch it back on YouTube. <laughs> um, the one thing that, that I'm concerned about, we we heard the term from Mr. Graves. I think it was workforce housing. If these houses are going to be that high, what what kind of workforce are we trying to attract? Are we trying to attract white collar executives, or are we trying to attract blue collar workers? You're not going to get blue collar workers in a 250 to 300 thousand dollar home, and then you have to tack 300, 400, 1,000, 2,000 dollars in. HOA dues because they're privatizing the street repairs. They're privatizing the snow removal. That's all going to add up. That's all going to add up. If I was in this situation, if I was up there on that day, I would shoot down a plan development for that reason. Because you're not going to sell those houses and you're not going to realize a proper return on your investment. That's one thing that worries me. That's why I, I, I'm going to say it. I'm very anti-HOA for that reason because it, they don't. 
Well, yes, if, and, and, and he's right. If they don't sell, they don't sell. But the problem is now you have a builder sitting on 50, 51% of the lots, so he can charge whatever he wants. Anyway, so that being said, I would just be very careful with, with this because we, we want workforce housing. I'm hearing Ms. Daniel back here saying we want workforce housing. I just don't think this is the way to go. Thank you. Appreciate your comment. Appreciate your comment. Anybody else? Uh, okay, we'll move on to um, any city uh, council members would like to comment on this. Yes. Mr. Phillips. Pardon me, boys. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, Patrick, or maybe Mr. Davis, I don't know who would be uh, looking at answering this question, but looking at the uh, layout plan, um, Diagram. Are we looking at 55 as a four-lane roadway, and with all of the lines and everything, and the, and the size? I'm unable to see whether it continues as a two-lane. So that's where they will, um, beyond uh, Nashville, they will be widening that to have a, um, a, a basically a third lane, right, Joe? The center lane, the, the center two-way left turn. Well, yeah. uh, they'll they'll make it so that it's a left-hand turn lane. Gotcha. That's what they'll do. Um, and the intersection of 55 and um, Nashville northbound, uh, the triangle that is to the east of the intersection, uh, is that a portion of the Somerset Reserve property? Yes. Um, you mean once it moves so that it uh, goes as a 90 degree? Correct. Yes. 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 Uh, and there's, there is no, excuse me, there's no plan for a right turn lane there uh, to proceed I eastbound? There is. We are going to be having them make some modifications so they, they, they do have split lanes. <coughs> excuse me. And merge merge lanes onto Huntington Drive either into Somerset Reserve or into Ken Kensington is anything uh, being looked at for that. I just am, am not able to discern from the plan. I don't know that uh, they're going to be making any widening there. No. For access, excuse me, access e uh, westbound to Somerset or eastbound uh, into to Kensington onto Huntington Drive. The Nashville will be widened mm -hmm. half a lane to ultimately, once it's all wide on, widened on Nashville, will be a three-lane cross-section. Uh, the amount of traffic, we didn't specifically look at it, but I would anticipate the amount of traffic dropping into either Huntington into their development or into the Kensington development on the east side of the road isn't sufficient enough to warrant a right drop lane. I think that's what you're asking about is kind of a right drop lane, like a D-cell lane to get in. There, at this time, no, no. Um, and I can't recall, but, but the homes that are on the east side of Nashville, south of uh, Chatham, and between Chatham and Swales, are they township or uh, homes? Or is they that city? are in the city, uh, but I'm not sure when they annexed in. I I assume the way that they're set up that they were there before the development occurred behind them, but I am not sure. Right. Okay. So they are in the city. Gotcha. The only property north of Swale that's not in the city is the property on the west side of the intersection. Okay. All right. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Um, <coughs> Let's go ahead. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thanks. Mr. Turrington, we've heard uh, a lot of we are asking them to cover on the cost of things. And what is a city looking at having to cover on the cost of this project? Uh, uh, really, nothing. The only thing that I mentioned is uh, because it's that is uh, the subdividers or the, um, uh, the developers' responsibility in any subdivision, whether it's public, private, um, plan development, or straight zoning. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, though, uh, east of the subdivision, uh, there is that uh, it, a narrowing of the uh, 55 
Uh, it goes from basically three lanes, then down to two lanes at Horizon, and then as you go west, it widens back out uh, at Nashville, and we're looking at fixing that. But that would that would be our cost. Uh, you know, if there is some compelling reason, which we're not sure there is, to uh, uh, oversize the uh, uh, the storm drainage, the ponds, for example, uh, then we might come back and and, and consider that. Uh, you know, we, whenever there's infrastructure that we find a need that we want to make it bigger, uh, is we're going to extend uh, regionally, uh, whether it's water, sewer, or stormwater. Uh, uh, Council is aware that you know we will we will budget money for that. Uh, we are not thinking that that is necessary here. Uh, there's no really regional benefit uh, to us doing that. Um, so. Other than that road widening on 55 east of the subdivision, the uh, the costs would be borne by the uh, the developer. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, you know some comments. You know when we talked about this several months ago, you know I had some I had some things that I felt that we wanted to try to to look at, and uh, and again in the comments that the uh, you know, the nearby residents have made um, on this thing. I mean, there's, there's some things we, that we wanted to take a look at. And of course, the first one was concerned about runoff. I don't have these in a specific order, but you know, we talked about the runoff, the stormwater runoff. And, uh, you know, having watched you know, a number of developments build around me, um, farmers' fields have no control for runoff. In other words, you know, when you look at a cornfield in the middle of um, July, that ground is hard as concrete, and, it's, and it goes down several inches as being hard, and so the water hits that, and the rainwater hits that, and just runs off, and there's no real control other than the ditches you know, at, at the borders of the property. Um, when you get a, a, a development that comes in, first of all, uh, there's a lot of grass, and the grass works as a, as a to capture some of the water, and it goes into the ground there, and that's actually better than a cornfield. Um, and then you have hard surface, sidewalks and streets and this type of thing. And there's, you have storm sewers, okay? So the water that gets out in the street runs into the storm sewer, which again goes into these retention ponds, which has the ability to hold several thousand gallons of water. And once those retention ponds get up so high, then the water runs off of there, you know, out into the either some other storm sewers or out into the ditches or whatever. So, you know, the, the, uh, the whole idea of the, of the subdivisions were, is a planned way to manage the water, to capture the water and manage it um, so that you don't have the flooding problems um, that they're experiencing right now. Um, and you can look at the, my own subdivision, uh, Stonebridge, uh, you can go out in the north end along Troy Pickwood and see all the retention ponds out there and, and they all work, you know. Um, this is, um, as I said, I think basically the engineers have done a very good job in trying to manage this, this uh, you know, the water runoff. Uh, and I'm, I, there's not too many firms in the area that we use, and, and uh, so I'm assuming we're going to be using one of the local firms, and they do a very good job in, in managing this. Um, and we talked about aligning uh, Nashville and State Route 55. We've mentioned that several times, that this is, that this is now going to be a 90-degree, a uh, you know, Nashville is going to go into State Route 55 at a 90-degree angle, uh, which will uh, eliminate some of the traffic problems that people have talked about, people cutting in too close and that type of thing, because... Uh, Nashville wasn't aligned correctly. Um, uh, we talked about workforce housing. Um, uh, you know, when you're talking two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars, you need an income. Uh, you know, the, the the numbers I get, you need about a twenty eight percent ratio of uh, uh, on a mortgage covering mortgage taxes and insurance. Uh, so, you know, twenty eight percent of your of your monthly income. Uh, Preferably less than that goes to, uh, um, you know, covering a, you know, the type of a mortgage, uh, and your debt ratio should probably be under 36% total. Although they can go, they say they can go to 45. Um, to do that, to afford these types of houses, you need a you need a household income in the 120 to 130 thousand dollar range. Okay, so just give you some idea of what, you know. I, you know, that, that to me is a good workforce. I guess what would you classify it? It's not a minimum wage. I mean, 
these houses aren't built for minimum wage workers, but they are built for people that have jobs and have been there a while and have gotten some raises and, and uh, have some skills that they're, that they're uh, helping their, their employer with. Um, uh, you know, we talk about the HOA fees. Uh, Westlake is, is in my uh, 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 ward, and I have several uh, friends in Westlake, uh, and I've talked to them, and uh, Westlake has been around for 20-some uh, years at least. Um, HOA, they, the same scenario they own, they are responsible for their streets, snow removal, trash removal. Uh, they have a walking trail. Uh, uh, and talking to them here today, they also have a, uh, a mature pond that they have to, to do some, a little bit more maintenance on and, and trees, mature trees, because the subdivision has been around for 20, 20 years or more. Um, and um, the, the people I've talked to are very happy there. They say that the houses at Westlake are uh, actually, in many cases uh, in the recent markets, have sold before the houses actually gone on market, which tells me that's a, that's a very high demand area. Um, uh, they recently redid their streets, um, and there was enough uh, money in the kitty uh, to, uh, to pay for all the, uh, the street upgrades that they've done out there, uh, and their uh, HOA, fee, HOA fees are less than $100 a month. Um, you know, uh, so again, that's, as, as somebody's already mentioned, you know, when you're buying a house, you know, you're told of the HOA fees, you're told of the restrictions that the HOA has, you know, so you, you know, it's, it's, so again, it's a, it's a nice way to maintain the neighborhood, uh, and uh, you know, then you make a decision on whether you want to, to buy and build or not. Um, to include all that type of thing in. Um, some other things we talked about: the easements uh, for widening the roads. That, as Mr. Titter says, you know, we've, or I think maybe Jill said there was a, uh, you know, Nashville is going to be widened and match what is on the other side, what's on the other side of the street by Kensington, so you have curb. A, you know, wider lane and then the regular traffic lanes. Um, State Route 55 will be widened, very similar to what's out in front of, uh, of uh, Kensington. Um, so again, you're going to see some very similar types of, of uh, design in that area. Um, there's going to be curbs and sidewalks, which you talk about, and we've gotten an easement to do the swales extension into uh, Wilson Road. So I mean, a lot of things, the developers promised a lot to the city. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, they've taken a hard look at this thing and, and uh, has worked with the city. And I think they're excited to come in and, and uh, get this project going. And, uh, you know, again, they're, they're, they're the ones that, that have to sell it. You know, they have to do the development and sell it to the builders, and the builders have to say, well, okay, we can build this price home and get it sold. Uh, so, uh, you know, the idea that there's going to be, um, you know, Troy has been very good in, uh, uh, in, in in, their, in working with their builders. I think we've only had uh, maybe uh, two problems with subdivisions that I'm aware of. Uh, one was Westlake early on, and the other one we did, we've been dealing with here recently uh, out there off of Peters, I think is where the other one is. But, but by and large, you know, most of the subdivisions that have been built in Troy have been very, very successful. And we wish that, I think this will be another successful project, you know, from that standpoint. Um, the only thing that we didn't talk about was uh, uh, you know, the, there are going to be uh, sidewalks uh, uh, around the property's perimeters, um, and I had suggested um, instead of that having recreational trails, as you go into the <coughs> some of the other uh, cities, uh, you know, I spent uh, some time over in Indi Indianapolis suburbs and over in Columbus suburbs, and you, know, you get into the, in a lot of these suburbs that are sitting out in the county, yeah, out away from the, uh, the, the cities, um, all have recreational trails instead of sidewalks. Um, and again, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, these things are being used by, uh, it allows two-way traffic on those, on those uh, uh, areas. So you have bicycle riders and baby buggies being pushed and kids, you know, I mean, the whole nine yards, is, it's, it's a, it makes a nice uh, uh, addition. And of course, with our uh, uh, streets and sidewalk plan, the, the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the city's plan is to, is to funnel all of the uh, uh, Bicycle traffic and, and, and recreational trail traffic uh, from the west end of town out on the 718, and then that's going to funnel down in off the 55. And of course, the, the subdivision like Kensington and, and this new subdivision uh, right now, there's no way for those people to get to downtown by using a bicycle. And, and so we've got to start building some way um, 
you know, to start having these, these types of recreational trails to help, help people that want to use other vehicles besides their, their, their automobiles or SUVs or whatever to get downtown, we've got to start building the, the, uh, the, 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 the ways to do that and these recreational trails, uh, you know, I think are a way to do that. Uh, I would support any uh, efforts that the ODA administration would do uh, to uh, make this happen. Uh, I think it would be a welcome addition and again that we've started that on uh, South Stanfield and I know we're going to continue that next year as they complete South Stanfield that we now have a recreational trail with sidewalk to get the some of the people in the West End, you know, down into Myers and, and Westbrook or uh, uh, not the, uh, Walmart in those areas, you know, they, they, you know, so this is something that I think that uh, as we gradually build out of these subdivisions, we start have to start focusing on making sure that we have alternative ways for people to get to move around and, and uh, get to where they want to go. Um, so again, I would encourage the city, uh, the ODA administration to take a look at this and uh, make some plans and I personally would support, um, as a councilman, I would support uh, the extra cost involved in that to uh, convert these uh, sidewalks into recreational trails. Um, <coughs> any other questions that we have? Mr. Chair, if I, if I may, I first. Yes, go ahead. Um, <laughs> I'm blaming it on the, on the steroids. Um, the uh, streets for uh, the Somerset subdivision, are they built to um, our, our general city specifications of a residential neighborhood so we don't wind up with a, uh, an issue like we did at Villages of Concord when particularly a developer may not be able to follow through when folks are looking to uh, try to come back into the city if you live? Well, that's... Uh, uh the general answer to your question is yes. They will have to follow uh, the appropriate subdivision regulations. In the case of the villages of Concord, it was just that they didn't finish. Uh, it wasn't that it was substandard, it just wasn't finished. And that's what we had to encourage over several years to get to the point that we're at now and hopefully almost at the finish line. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Yeah. What are your drawers here? Move forward as staff is recommended. I think we can do that. <coughs> okay, uh, we have one more subdivision to talk about. No, we don't. Okay. No. No. Then we are. We have no other business for you. Okay, no other business. Okay. Yes. Uh, then we are adjourned. <laughs>